So first of all, Dave, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's a, it's a pleasure to see, meaning I see you all over the place and I see Kevin talking <laughs> all over the place. And uh, yeah. uh, I'm sure what you guys do is exciting. And uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll start with you. You tell us a little bit yeah. about yourself and uh, then we'll transfer. We'll transfer. Yeah. Yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. Right. I, love, I love it when somebody says, tell me about yourself because it's my favorite subject. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not true that's not true um you know sh long story short and i will make it short I, i i talk very often about a uh you know like an entrepreneurial journey if you will okay um i was i come from a blue collar background in, in england i'm actually an immigrant to the united states i emigrated in 86 and um you know i came here i i think it's yet with, with kind of like uh, stars in my eyes. You know, I was a young guy coming to America and, um, you know, I didn't have a great deal of financial education. You know, I was very good at trading time for money and I understood that, that, that philosophy or structure very well. It was what my father told me. He said, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, work hard, right? Take care of your family. Just solid, you know, moral fiber, if you will. And uh, I was very good at that, but, um, financially challenged and uh you know i landed a I landed a career that i loved and if it, it given me some financial freedom we talked about this a little bit you know before we came on air if, if if i was a firefighter and a paramedic and i worked for 16 years in that career just north of boston here That's and amazing. um yeah i loved it you see i loved it man i loved i loved the camaraderie i loved the um i loved the the level playing field if you will that um that it created Um, I, I loved relying on the guy next to me to get in out, to get in and out of that building and get to go home to my family, you know, and I don't Incredible. want to say that to be overly dramatic, but you know, when you come out into this world, into our world, already, I look at you and I say, that's a guy that I would lock arms with, you know, and, and, <laughs> you know, some exploration you, because like will attract like, but anyway, Um, I, I transitioned out of there and uh, I had some challenges in my life personally. And um, I, I, I had worked some construction for many years. And I, I saw in construction that the, there were these guys and girls who showed up in nicer cars, who were not covered in mud, uh, who, who, who seemed to have a bigger smile on their face exactly. <laughs> than I did. You know? It's easier to smile in a nice car. Yeah, a nice car, clean suit, nice white shirt, you know, exactly. my fingernails are clipped, not, not, you know, and um, I, I studied what they did and I, and I, got, a, I got a new education and I, uh, I immersed myself 200% in, in real estate investing from, from the ground up. Uh, I, I say often I'm kind of a blue collar guy in a, in a white collar world. I bring, uh, I bring uh, my, bulldog man, <laughs> my bulldog mentality to the table. Um, it's the only one that works. It's the only one that works. I mean, there's, there's no time for, for, you know, delicacies, shall we say? Yes, always be respectful, all right? But, right. you know, delicacies, when we start dealing with hundreds of millions of dollars, there's no room for delicacies. We, we, need, to be, we need to be brutally direct. And um, that, is, that has served me well. It's served me very well. And, and uh, you know, a 12-year career now, in full-time real estate. And there's nothing really in real estate that I haven't touched from single family, buy, fix and flip to private lending, hard money lending, notes, uh, deeds, mortgages, small multifamily, large multifamily. And um, when COVID, uh, COVID uh, decimated our economy and our country, um, those that pivoted um, have created an opportunity to succeed. And that's what we did. We pivoted and we went very bullish on, uh, on the multifamily real estate. Um, well, I had a little TV show along the way. We did uh, Flip in Boston on the uh, A&E Network. Uh, I got to meet some pretty cool people who are now, you know, in the TV world, uh, our business partners. Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank is our business development now with what we're doing. So Amazing. That was kind of short for me. I did pretty good. I did, I did okay there. That's I wanna, you know what? I know you asked me to come talk to you, but I want to hear more about you, my friend. No problem. I no problem. Know why, my pleasure. why you gave up being a, a teacher. So, so, the, so the, the past and the transition is a little bit weirdly similar, and I don't find it that is. often. So kudos to you. Why can't I tell you? That sounds like 
Uh, it sounds very much like me. And I can tell you, I can, I can, uh, I, I know when I see and feel brother in arms, as we call it. Um, I heard Tony Robbins said many times, and I feel the same yeah. way. And so I basically also grew up in a different country. I'm in, right now in Israel. And uh, as a guy who went to the army and was an infantry unit and all that stuff. So I know what is to be in the mud, even though at that time I could sleep on anything on the ground. And today I have to have my mattress in a good hotel. Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise I became very spoiled. <laughs> But <laughs> you need a high, you need a hypoallergenic pillow, huh? Exactly. I, I have this picture of me with a gun, you know, and the whole thing, in, you know, in the in the house. And I tell my kids, yeah. that's a different guy now, you know, <laughs> meaning that's it's the funny. same guy, but I can't do what he did, and obviously yeah. I couldn't do what I do now. But uh, anyways, I I for many years I was a, I was a teacher, and I loved every second. I mean, I was teaching kids middle school, high school, and. I loved, I loved the interaction, loved what I did. And I was running summer camps and did all kinds of things. I was always entrepreneurial in my actions, but I was, uh, I, was, I was a teacher. In the end of the day, I was an educator. And at the age of, I think, 35, it was or 30, 35, I, was, I, I understood that I have to do something different to change my finances. And I started reading, meaning I'm not one of those, you know, privileged guys who, who could go to, to the places where we now hire people from, you know, NYU, Shaq, yeah. you know, those places. Yeah, and, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and uh, I, I didn't have that privilege. So I had only one privilege. And uh, I remember reading all these books. It started with the very basic stuff of Robert Kiyosaki, Rich, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was the first thing. And then it went all the way into, I took a courses. I went to a, can, you know, like an informal academy. I started with just learning what everybody's today learning, you know, single family homes and condos and stuff like that. But then it started to go into financing and development and the real stuff. And um, at a certain point, I got, a, I got very lucky. I was relentless and I got a very good job. And from that job, without getting into details, we don't have time now, but I got into a very large company. And from that point, I have met few people, just like you said, you saw those guys with the suits, a lot of the white, yeah. you know, the yeah. white shirts, yeah. clean and all that stuff. I met through selling, uh, through being a sales guy who sold uh, high-end condos. That's what I did. I sold high-end condos. Yeah. And uh, I met few people along the way who bought from me those condos. And, you know, at the certain point where we call in Hebrew, I had this chutzpah, if you know this word. Chutzpah. A chutzpah, it's like being fresh, being like, you know, like direct, I went to them and said, yeah. what do you do for a living? You know, it's, and, and uh, you know, all of a sudden the guy says, I do M&A. What's M&A? What's mergers and acquisitions? And this guy is, is taking lots, is buying them, is consulting them, is building, you know, uh, office buildings, condos. Another guy has a fund. What we do today, pretty much. He has a fund and yeah. he, has, he has multifamily all across the U.S. and all kinds of stuff like that. And that blew me away. I said, oh my gosh, there's a much larger world. That drew me to study further and further. And, uh, and I made a decision at the time that because seeing all these young guys who came out of college early and yeah. st started you know, launching their career early, I said, what they do in one year, I'm going to do in, th uh, what they do in three years or four, I'll do in one. And uh, that's exactly what happened. And today, I'm sorry I didn't do five in one. Meaning, it's, I got, meaning I said, I could do better than that. You know, I could push myself yeah, yeah. harder. But um, uh, eventually I became, meaning to make the story short, got into real estate investment banking in one of the largest firms. Uh, and, then, uh, and then from there, I, you know, I just went and I joined a, a very large investment company. I started for them a company uh, in New York, which was a, a development. We focused uh, on mostly condo development, student housing, some student housing we went into and uh, some office retail, meaning we were all over the place and checking, you know, got into different type of markets. If it's in, from Brooklyn, Connecticut, uh, Ohio, I also checked, we never got in there to North Carolina, but uh, yeah. fantastic market also. But anyways, I was very active. And today I'm already launching on my own, basically a lot of stuff. So, so when, you, when, you, uh, when you take down an acquisition, are you, are you taking them down in, in a syndicated format? Is that how you do your business? So you we like to so, raise, raise some capital, or, and, and then okay. So that's together. a great that's a great question. So, so in my role in the company, 
um, we had two hats, basically. We had the hat of the GP and the hat of the LP, okay? Mm -hmm. um, the GP, in the GP hat, we did everything. We were yeah. focused on very specific few deals, and it was, you know what a general partner does. A sponsor, basically what we call a sponsor, to stay the people who don't understand that are listening, I'm sure most of them, are, right. most of them do, is the, is the honcho, is the guy who writes the deal, who does everything. Um, is the entrepreneur, what we call the sponsor. But so basically as a sponsor, what we did was um, running everything, top to bottom, meaning taking engineers, architects, you know, seeing sure. zoning, zoning lawyers, everything. everything. Meaning, Sure, fighting sure. the municipalities, you know, the whole garbage. And, uh, and, and the uh, neighbors. <laughs> exactly. And a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. And, and for that purpose, I had a very good team. And until today, I meaning we're in touch all the time. It's, it's just amazing how a team and people, and that's, I think, makes the Everything. difference between, yeah. you know, those solo, you know, investors who go and buy those single family homes, all, all those things, yeah. to understand that the commercial real estate game is a team work. Is is yep. you can't do it without a team, yep. and uh, until yep. today, meaning me and my team, it's it's even though we don't work together, me and my team, we share deals. It's like what do we do together? It's an unbelievable thing, and the more connections What's, you have, the more stuff you can do. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and by the way, to answer your other, the other Sorry, side, yes. <laughs> it was the LP side. We did the LP yes. meaning, and with the LP and on the LP hat that allowed us to go into deals that were way too big for us or out of state or, right. and that right. was phenomenal. We got into deals from $3 million to $300 million. And I, you know, letting, letting it gave, gives you a lot of pride and, and uh, tons of potential and growth. I tell you, it's, uh, it's almost as if I've, I re we've read each other's script. <laughs> and I mean that sincerely, honestly, no, I do. I mean that. I, because here's, here's what's interesting. You and I have connected only a few times on LinkedIn. Maybe we've watched a little bit of each other's content, great format, and said that it would be, uh, it would be beneficial to each other. And then maybe also to, to people who listen to us to, to, to learn what we do. But it, it amazes me how on the GP and the LP side, so on the GP side, you know, 120, 130 doors in a rougher marketplace, you know, learn the, the, the hard way of property management and you know, uh, city run, um, uh, you know, social programs and, you know, just all of the nuances, the ins and the outs and uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then as you now moving over to the other side, I think, I think one thing I learned very early on was the concept of a self-made millionaire. I always found that to be slightly egotistical because to your point, there is no self-made anything, right? Self meaning one, it's Absolutely. never one. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's, it's the support. And I go all the way back without getting too crazy with it. I go all the way back to my wife. I always say my wife is the rock that I get to stand on so I can look cool. Right. It's like the foundation starts in my house and then comes out of my home into the business world. And then to build those layers of it has, I don't know what, how you feel. I always feel it has to be reciprocal. It's got to be reciprocity. Um, that 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 ultimate win-win type scenario what values do i have what skills do i have that i can bring and then find people who have better skill sets in certain areas that i don't have so you know for example analysis makes me fall asleep i'm not fantastic with with you know spreadsheets and data analysis etc cetera, etc cetera. but one of my partners 26 years old i stole him from Fidelity, right? He was working at Fidelity. <laughs> Good I, one. I, I, stole, I stole this young guy. I'm 54 years old. This guy's 26. Yeah. He built something magnificent so he can step into it. But, you know, data analysis, computer skill sets, underwriting process, unbelievable. 100%. Walter, my other partner, you know, 25 years buying, developing multifamily assets in his marketplace. So all I have to do, to your point, is like be the figurehead, push, push the things you know, through the pipeline, bring in the, uh, the relationships, uh, you know, based off of my past experiences. So that, that team environment with reciprocity, to your point, I feel is critical, right? I don't yes. ever want anybody to feel like they didn't do well in any deal that we did. From the investor getting a double digit return, 
all the way up to the guy who goes in there and stops the faucet from leaking. Everybody on that on that project should should 100%. feel good about what they're doing. I don't know whether that's unrealistic. I hope it isn't. I still believe that everybody starts no, at a hundred. I believe that's the way. No? I yeah. agree hundred percent. Let's so yeah, you know what? Sure. Let, let's dig in. Let's dig in a little bit uh, to uh, you know what we do basically. But um, I would love to hear your perspective first, and then let's dig into that. Uh, let's talk a sure. little bit about multifamily. What's going on in the market yeah. today? Um, let's, let's talk on the first surface as we call it. And now yeah. we'll start, you know, go granular. Sure. Yeah. Look, on, on the surface, you'll hear that everything is fantastic. Uh, a lot of the big operators are consistently reporting, you know, that they've only taken maybe a two or a 3% dip in rent. Um, they're, 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 they're shedding a, you know, a light in the world, uh, around multifamily and, Look, I don't, I'm, I'm not one to tear somebody else down to, to make me look better. But I, I bring a lot of fundamentals to, to multifamily investing. And the fundamentals for me are this, is that there is a large percentage, I believe, and I'm seeing it. I don't believe it. I know it. There is a large percentage of multifamily assets that have been purchased in the past, you know, eight to 10 years. And a lot of those assets have been purchased by people not like you and I, i.e. professionals. Somebody with excess capital says, hey, throw it in there. It's an easy thing to do. And right. you and I both know that multifamily investing is not easy. When no. you've got 150, 200, 50 tenants all in one, one complex, every single one of those people have their own needs, their own personalities that have to be you know, dealt with, they are our clients, right? We don't buy multifamily assets. What we do is, is we invest in the people that live there. Um, in return, they pay us rent for their hard, hard work. So, you know, I feel that a lot of these, these, these operators do not have the skill sets to work net operating income. And if you can't work NOI, you can't work valuation, right? Exactly. It's not like single oh, yeah, family yeah. houses, right? You know, one, I would just add this. I have a friend of mine who is, who is a manager of a huge fund that they do actually retail uh, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, all across the U.S. And he said to me yeah. a sentence that went with me for years. He said, the devil is in the details. Always. And, and you got to know the details. You have to work. Yeah. You know, NOI just doesn't just happen. It happens because you drill down into every right. single line. That's right. Every line. Take care of it because the line tells a story and the story tells you facts and the facts are things. And those things related to maintenance or management to roof issues or whatever, or or financing, something is up and you have to know how to deal with that line and how to implement it in order to have a real NOI. And that's exactly what the problem that you, you have mentioned. People who are not professional enough there's no chance that it's not that they're not smart enough. They could be even smarter yeah. than both of you, both of us together, but they don't yeah. have the experience, the know-how and the training in order to get this thing done. And that requires. Well, his, 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 look, here's the point. Your transition from where you were to where you are required years and years and years and years and years of learning and then application. So many people will learn and not apply, learn and not apply, exactly. right? The application, the feet on the street in the trenches is where the true value I believe is created. So when you and I look at a line item and we see a 47% expense ratio, we immediately see that as an opportunity to make money because I like my expenses in a 35 to 45% expense ratio, depending on the size of the property, blah, 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 blah. And we have all of our, it's almost proprietary in the sense of when, when we look at the numbers and I already confessed, I'm not super cool on all of the details, but I know enough numbers to be powerful enough as as the CEO of this company to say, that's a problem. That's exceptional. Right? Because the, the amateur will look at an NOI and say, that doesn't make any money. Whereas the professional will like to your point, will look at an NOI drill down in there and say, well, why is that maintenance expense that high? What's going on there? Well, that's the guy who's been double invoicing for, for 15 exactly. years, right? That's the guy who's, who's, you know, cousins to the property management company. And, you know, the owner, us, 
inexperienced sitting out in California. We don't understand. We just thought it was going to be a great investment. And then all of a sudden you get a hiccup, you get a challenge, um, you know, you get a, a decrease in rent and all of a sudden the deal doesn't make sense anymore. We're right. actually seeing now pre foreclosure deals coming to us uh, in multifamily because yeah, of, it's already uh, happening. Of the COVID Which, yeah. So, yeah. so tell, tell us a little bit about the, you know, the, the foreclosure deals that are coming in. That's very interesting for me to hear. It's purely off of the fact that these amateurs had no reserves. They had no reserves. They had no skills to pivot and adjust. Um, they, look, you and I what, both what, know. What type of LTV is there? Meaning you... Uh, what we're doing those now. Those foreclosed these, assets. Oh, these are coming in at like 85, 90 percent loan wow. values. Wow. Wow. That's what, that's what the, 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 the financing was like. And listen, look. Why are, when we buy today, we buy at a 65% max. And the reason we buy at a 65% max LTV is because our business model is designed around cash flow. So the lower the, 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 lower the LTV, the higher the, lower the, the debt services. It scales. It's, it's, you know, it's, like a, it's like an engine. Yeah. There's a great analogy. It's an engine, right? You've got to fine tune the engine. A little less gas, a little more oxygen, right? Right. So these, these pre foreclosure deals that we're seeing um, are based on high LTVs. The debt service just didn't work in the beginning. There's still some of these are still in at like seven and a half, eight percent. Whereas you know, right now, the, the one we're, we're closing on a, a nice little eight unit, just a small deal uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks. But you know, I just looked at the financing on that thing. We've we got a three and a half percent. Three and a half percent with our with our first first position lender on there, twenty five year uh, note with a ten year uh, ten year balloon, I think it is. But it's like you start looking at, at those numbers. No wonder you and I are in the right place at the right time because the amount of inventory that we're beginning to see, we have zero, and I'm not exaggerating. We have zero outbound marketing for lead generation, zero, and we're underwriting. I would say we look at twelve a week. We heavily underwrite four and we'll walk two wow. weekly. And out of those two, you know, maybe one or two a month, we'll meet the, the buy criteria for an LOI and start moving some capital into, into due diligence. So um, it's, it's, a, it's an aggressive time if you know what you're doing. Yeah. Tell me something. Those, again, those going back to those assets that you see that they are uh, – in this state of foreclosure, basically. So I understand, okay, yeah. so we understand how much, how much leverage they took. We understand uh, their, their issues, but there's one thing that I'm very curious to know. How much revenues are coming in? How much rent is coming in? Meaning, is, is there a problem with the rent? Yeah, great are those question. tenants um, on, the, on, the, on the side of, uh, you know, working class side? Are they more A class? Where are yeah. they? Great question. So these are, these are C plus, B minus um, type properties. Um, our business model is to buy B, B plus properties, B, B plus properties, core plus. So we're seeing the deficit in the pre foreclosure more in the C plus, B minus areas. So that tells us more of a, you know, a blue collar, uh, blue collar mindset. And here's where we see the, uh, the deficiencies. The deficiencies are in rent collection. And I bring, um, you know, I bring like a, a little bit of a, a psychological mindset to, to, to this uh, arena as well. With the amount of news we hear on COVID, COVID crisis, you know, rent moratoriums, um, the, uh, the, the, the um, single family um, um, uh, structure in foreclosure right now, you don't have to pay your mortgage, blah, 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 blah. Right. That sets up a mindset for people to say, I don't have to pay my rent. And what happens is, is the, the amateurs in the marketplace don't know how to be um, reactive, right? Uh, they don't know how to be proactive. They're always reactive. Right. So a professional like us, we're reaching out to our tenants as soon as we see something on the horizon, right? As soon as we, we because again, it's fluid, it's fluid. So if you're not in a, in a proactive environment, if your management team doesn't have the experience um, to, to work these assets, then you're setting yourself up for failure. And that's what's happened with these. We're seeing um, assumptive loans right now, where we can come in and, and buy assets for 
you know, forty, fifty thousand um, dollars in upfront costs and step straight into to some of these mortgages. And these aren't even in a deficit. These are these are assets where the where the owners. We got one deal right now. There's an owner in Minneapolis who went through all of the craziness that happened out there recently. He had multiple businesses out there. He looked at his hundred and I think it was a hundred and ten door unit complex. It's in underwriting now. But he looked at his complex down in Florida and he said, I want nothing to do with it. I don't want to put another penny in there. He had some more uh, units that needed to be uh, rehabbed. Um, he had some tenancy issues where he needed to, you know, collect some rent, lease up some units. Everything that an amateur does, this guy had done. And then because of all the distractions in his other businesses, he just goes, no more. I'm done. I, I can't exactly. do this anymore. So, because, you know, there's, there's so many forces, right? There's so many forces. Because people think they have to, first of all, manage on their own. They don't have the, they don't utilize the right, how to say, manpower in the beginning, it, as to begin with, right. and then they run into the problem. And then really to back up with that, that's a problem. But um, yeah, for sure, for sure. The, the, for the sure. one thing I just wanted, you know, you know, drill down, just to share a thought for a second. In my opinion, what we're seeing now, and I would, I would like to so, one second analyze this. We have, um, in, I'm talking about multifamily specifically. Um, what we're seeing now, and, and I'm going to drill down for a second into class A, B, and C for a second, because class yeah, D, sure. you know, the D class, what we call, you know, section eight and HUDs and all those, you know, they'll be the same always. It's the same stuff, same yeah. stories, everything's the same. But with A, B, and C, it's not the same. Everything changes now. And the game, and the, you know, it, you have to go back to the, what we call the checkboard and see what you have to do and how to move around sure. and how to get things uh, uh, going, how to get things going. So, so, the way, so, the way, so the way I would, uh, I would do it is the following. Uh, first of all, we see A class. Let's talk about A class, class meaning property, class A properties. The major cities, we know what's happening. California, you know, Los Angeles, you know, San Francisco, New York City, you know, the big, sure. the big apple is being eaten, you know? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, they and, found uh, a worm in the middle of it. Exactly. And, um, and it's not, meaning, I'm saying with a smile, but I'm not, I'm not, happy, I'm not a happy camper about it, uh, especially as a person who, uh, who is a very New York type of guy. But, you know, going seeing what's going on there. So class A is really suffering. And that is specifically because of two reasons. And the first reason is the COVID reason, you know, elevator issues and social distancing issues and all those things, pandemic. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is the civil unrest. I Meaning, those are the two major issues. Sure. The people, and I don't know the civil unrest now that we are post what we call, uh, you know, elections. I have no idea. I'm not a prophet and I've refuse to play one but um, um we we'll have to wait and see what's happening and those guys from those places meaning in those classic properties they moved out to suburbia right to rule one and they moved to houses some of them moved out to permanent type of housing um, most of them uh, uh, and if someone is benefiting from it from the multifamily end okay and not the single family end are those a class properties so nobody can say, and that I hear it a lot, and that's I think a mistake. People saying A-class properties are down. I think it's it's wrong. A-class properties are down in the major cities because those guys are moving either to single family homes, their homes or other homes, or they're gonna lease, they're gonna rent an, a class A property somewhere in suburbia, somewhere with you know a gated community, they're gonna move to Florida, they're gonna move to all those places. Did so you read my business plan? Did you read my business no, plan? You've been no, my business I'm not plan. guilty. <laughs> <laughs> so those guys, that's what happened to A-class properties. Now in B's and C's, that's where the fine tuning starts because I think that it's the first time, you know, in, I don't know if it's in history, maybe it's in history, you will tell me, but, but I think it's almost the first time in history that the B plus and the B's are, you can make like a line between them and the B minus and C's, like literally a line. And it's not so gray anymore. Why? Because the middle class, the middle class um, is more spread out professionally. And the, and the working class is very attached to this 
specific economies that are, are in that area. So if you see, for example, that sure. a lot of people are working in Walmart or in some kind of place like that, you know, in a certain city that is not in tra- a treasure market, right? And a and place that is not as central and, uh, or secondary or treasury, or basically, but the thing, you're seeing that they're working in a certain place. I think that if that place have a problem, and Walmart is not a good example because they're doing fantastic, but I'm saying sure. you're picking another type of employer that is doing badly because of the pandemic or some retail center or something like that. I don't know, that people work in, and that is what the industry is going to, you know? And those guys don't have jobs, you're going to have this, the class C and B minus are going to really, I think they're going to get hit. What do you think about that? No, I, I agree. I agree with a lot of what you say. And, and here's, here's what I find interesting. So our, our business model is B class properties in secondary tertiary MSA, right? Right. So we pick those assets. And then what we do is, is we double down to your point. We're doubling down on two strategies. One core plus. I want the B-class asset that has enough movement in there for me to upgrade facilities. So I'm in Florida. So a nicer gym area, a nicer pool area, a nicer office space, uh, maybe taking the, you know, the, the old clubhouse and turning it into um, some smaller office space as part of the complex. And the reason that we're doing that is, is to your point, those A-class tenants, yes, they have financial debt. But when we start looking at that movement that you're talking about, there isn't enough A-class multifamily assets in the secondary and tertiaries because the inner city is what's attracted that that property in the first place, right? Right. They want to be downtown. They want to be New Yorkers. They want to be, you know, LAers, Los Angeleans. What is it? Los Angeleans? I don't know. I'm going to use that. Doesn't matter. Right? (laughs) Anyways, they're leaving. Anyways, they're leaving. They're leaving. They're leaving. (laughs) So, you know, uh, we're, not in, we're not in the business of ground up development, building A-class assets. Let somebody else roll those dice. Right. But we can move faster, okay? Speed, speed, speed. So if I take a 100, 150 unit, you know, B-class property, I take care of the, the maintenance, the exterior. We upgrade a few things here and there. Maybe we put some, some money into a nice gym, whatever. Maybe put a gate up in front. Now it's a gated community, right? Right. So Nothing now it's a B. There, right. A now it's a B plus A minus already. Now it's a B plus A minus. And here's the thing: I don't have to run my numbers looking for A um, A class property incomes. I can run my numbers on a B class, right? B plus. So I'm not ever pushing the rental amount. I'm going at market value comparable to what's around me and yet i've got the nicest uh nicest complex you know on a on a three to five mile radius so to your point yeah i see the a's coming down i see the b's coming up i see the a's almost becoming a b plus to your point again the c's and the d's they're going to continue to do what they do down there it's not out uh, my, my my you know my my business workhouse if you will i like to stay in those other asset classes but it's definitely an interesting conversation watching what's happening because it's, it's all location again. It's so specific to, right. to those markets. How cool you is know? it? How cool is it that, you know, talking about myself now, you know, I was, you know, wearing my hat, you know, from my previous, my previous hat, as we call it. Um, we were so focused on value add and value add was aggressive value add, meaning going, seeing yes. a real problem, uh, whether in management or in construction or something that has vacancy, you know, up to 70% vacancy. And we, yeah. that's yeah. where we saw yeah. gold, right? That's where we yeah. saw, that's, uh, that's me. That's where everybody were like, you know, that's the previous market. Everybody said, oh, I don't want it. And I, and I yeah. said, wait, wait a minute, let's dig in. Let's see where, if, if there's a possibility. And if I found something that would be interesting yeah. or development, you know, something that right. is, why was that? Because, you know, everything was so, the market was so hot. Everybody was running everywhere, sure. buying. Sure, sure. And now the value add became from those large, right, arbitrage, I would say, you know, sure. development. Yeah, yeah. Grass yeah. value add. All of a sudden yeah. the value add became 
what you speak about, the small numbers, the tiny yeah. upgrades, the, you know, yeah. taking one thing from here and then making it there. And that yeah. is so cool in my opinion. Um, and here's what we did with it too. And I'm, that's so cool that you, you, you pulled that out of my, my, my chatter because you've hit the nail on the head. So I've got one complex and I can raise the NOI, you know, a couple of points, whatever, right? On, on the bottom line. But that's, that's not enough, right? So now it's like scalability. And what's happening is, is the market allows us now to scale. So our fund is a hundred million dollar fund, not super huge, but not super small, right? Hundred right. million dollar fund. So with a hundred million dollars in private equity, I can buy $300 million worth of core plus assets all in one marketplace. So I become super dialed in. I don't have to go to the Carolinas. I don't have to go to Texas. 100%. I don't have to go to Georgia. I don't, have to, I don't have to expand out when the team for us has already been built in one marketplace, the Gulf Coast region of Florida. So when we look at that core plus strategy, I have so much to choose from that I can offer double digit returns targeted to my investors with confidence because now I can build up that database, fund one, done. Now we start building out for fund two, we can get into some lending and some other things going forward. But that one, that one strategy, I, every one of the properties that we underwrite for acquisition, the majority of the heavy lifting has been done. They've got all of their hurricane windows. They've got all their hurricane tie roofs. They've done all the big stuff, right? right. Uh, systems, air conditioning, all of that, all of it, tick that box, tick, tick, tick. So then we go in, with the, with the easy stuff, kitchens, bathrooms, landscaping, repositioning, remarket, bad tenants out, good tenants in, property management done, next. Let's do another one and another one and another one. And then we hold for a five to seven year strategy for exit. So yeah, you, you, you got it, man. I mean, you, you hit exactly what, that's why I said to you, are you reading my business plan? Because yeah. that's really what it is. I wish, yeah. I, I should have. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got it now. It sounds fantastic. Let, let me ask you this. Um, you guys playing mostly general partners or limited partners? What game you like to be? Yeah, no, great question. So we're, we're, we're a management company. So uh, Freedom Venture Management manages all of the assets. Okay. And then our investors come in um, uh, buying shares of the company. So we're a, a, a 506C Regulation D fund. We are the managers. Uh, we run everything. We make the decisions. It's all laid out in our PPM. Mostly accredited um, guys. Investors, like I said, sorry? Accredited investors mostly, obviously. Accredited investors, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. only accredited. $100,000 minimum investment. Uh, most of our conversations around the 250 to 500. Uh, we're talking to some institutions right now who are uh, in due diligence. Um, it's, it's difficult. And, and I don't know, I'm sure you've experienced this. The biggest challenge we had very early on is a syndicated deal to raise capital, one deal. It's easy. Here's the deal. Here's the pictures. Here's the property. Here's the plan. Right. This is what we need to execute. A fund is not money, easy. Here's your return. Fund, 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 oh, fund structure friend, is not simple. You. Oh, it's um, the, like the human, the human uh, you know, disposition visually says, okay, my money is on that house. And that, that's palatable to the retail investor. Now we say to them, well, your, your money, your capital isn't on that one deal. You own shares in a company that owns all of these deals. Right. Right. And then they're like, what? Isn't that a REIT? No, that's, that's a publicly traded REIT. This is yes. a private investment. This exactly. is a private fund, you know? So you so, know what the uh, interesting, let, let me just jump in on that. That's very interesting because yeah. I had, meaning I worked at the time um, you know, for BDO, if you know BDO, it's one of the... Oh, yeah. People who you know, know, I, I know BDO. Had, <laughs> in Israel, I was the head of real estate investment banking at the time. But anyways, yeah. very interesting thing. So I dealt with some, you know, bond, you know, you know all kinds of things that are very interesting. Sure. And, and sure. what I learned and what I remember is that when it comes to exactly what you're talking about, you know, the structure of fund versus an individual investment, what we call... Sure. Um, it's, it's so interesting because when you come to the individual person, the individual guy, if, if you're an individual, and also it's understood, it's, it makes sense. If you come to an individual guy and he comes already into real estate and he's not a real estate guy per se, 
Of course he would want to see the deal and, and he yeah. wants to get related to it. It's also an emotional thing, I guess. But um, of course, when it comes to a fund, it's a whole different perspective. So the larger funds, the, the, either the, what we call, sorry, semi-institutional, all the institutional investors, the way I see it, they have two uh, sets of philosophies. One philosophy is to go and, um, and, you know, that's from, you know, talking to them and dealing with them. But anyways, the f- one philosophy that they have is, is to either go for large mega deals, you know, yeah. Yes. Not, not 150 units or something like that, but, you know, to go right. to those huge corporations who buy a yeah. billion dollar portfolios or property, whatever it is, yeah. you know, $900 yeah. million, dollars, those types. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That's where they can deploy, you know, a certain amount of money, come in with a 40% or a 30. They have the limits. Each country has their own rules and they come in with their limits, but they have a very strong position. They're a very powerful uh, LP, and that's how they come in. That's one type of strategy they come in with. Second yeah. type of strategy is the fund strategy, is to come and tell them, uh, listen, we have a lot, but th- we have a lot of, meaning properties, we have a huge portfolio, and uh, that's what we have. And now we're building a fund of, let's say, X amount of money that, that is really fitting them, let's say $100 million or $200 million, yeah. Numbers that can already talk them or even $80 million, but something that they can relate to because it's large enough. It's sizable. Right. Right. And then they say, okay, let's go and show me what you can invest in. What's your strategy? But you know what the downside in that strategy is? You have to have a lot of properties, huge portfolio, and they have to, and that's what they have to see. So, and the other problem, and I don't know if, and a lot of people are not designed for that, is they are so slow, baby. They are so slow. <laughs> they can't move. Yeah. You know, yeah. committee, another committee, and you have to dance and do the, you know, the little, ah, yeah, you know, every single time, yeah. and it's not yeah. easy. Yeah. So, his, so his, kudos his to those is, who can do it every single time. Why can I tell you? It's not simple. Here's the thing, man. The business model just makes sense, right? By underperforming assets, right? Make them more for profitable, hold them for five to seven years, sell them for a profit. I mean, the business model is just so simple, okay? And the, the challenge I find is this, is that even with a, a track record of 125 million raised, 125 million deployed, paid back to the investors, double digit returns, 20% targeted IRRs proven out over and over and over again. As soon as it comes to that fund structure, and so it should be, by the way, they then drill down into the operators because really what they do is they're investing in the people first because the business, I don't have some secret sauce. I don't have something that somebody has never done before. Right. So why invest with us, right? Well, you invest with us because of the track record, because of the people, because of the communication, because of the systems, because of the, right? So that's, right. that's where it, it really gets interesting. And I would love to tell you we've been you know, super successful in the race. Um, it's a challenge. I mean, we're, we, you know, we started in, in July, uh, we, our filing was finished and, and we went, you know, we it now allowed us the opportunity to raise capital publicly. And we're, you know, we're, we're kind of 50% of where we would want to be. Um, I had a fun, you'll appreciate this. I had a, a fund manager, an institutional investor. Uh, he said to me, he said, if I write you a check and I take out your fund for a hundred million and I do it in one go, he said, how fast can you deploy the capital and start paying the quarterly distributions? And look, I, <laughs> my, my wheelhouse is my wheelhouse. My game is getting elevated every single day. It's elevated having a conversation with you today, right? We learn from everybody we talk to. And I said, can you hold on a second? I need to make a phone call. <laughs> and I called Walter, my partner in Florida, um, who's, you know, runs point on all our acquisitions. I said, if I give you a, a hundred mil tomorrow, how fast can you, you spend it? But spend it right. Don't go outside of our buy box. He said, That's they, a danger. in all truth and on. Yeah, right. He said, in all truth and honesty, he said, I could buy $300 million with the real estate in our marketplace, in our, in our uh, target area. He said, I could buy it in, you know, 90 days, cash flow 30 days after that. 
I said, that's aggressive. But, you know, that, that's where it's at. That's what these guys are looking for. They're looking for those, those you know, those larger takeout partners. But uh, the game goes on, man. I mean, I'm talking to some, uh, some professional athletes now. I've got a couple of that's XMLB cool. pitchers. Yeah, a couple of XMLB pitchers who want to play. And to go full circle on that conversation, the reason that the conversations are so good with those guys, that they're, they're blue collar guys, you know, they're not, they don't have the, the Harvard degrees and the Yale University stuff. Right. And, you know, I, no right or wrong, I'm not tearing anybody else down, but you know, I just like, I like a zero degree conversation, you know, whether it's with yes. a, with a fund manager or an institution or whether it's a, you know, an individual. So, you know, you know what, that's exactly meaning you're talking about that. And that's meaning from where we came from, so yeah. that's exactly what motivated me, meaning when COVID hit and I found myself less mobile, you know, just like yeah. everybody else, yeah. I guess. Sure. And, sure. Uh, yeah. Meaning I couldn't just sit still, you know, that's, you know, that the, the type of people we are. And I just started writing down stuff and that, you know, everything I know about commercial real estate alongside of looking at all kinds of deals that came in and things were still unknown at the time. And where is right. it going? And those notes became a course and I made a course and this course is like for beginners. Meaning I was thinking about myself. Yeah. What would make my life easier back then. So I made a whole sure. course. For them. So that's, that's what I'm basically, that's awesome. I got really busy with that. And then that's uh, you know, I'm promoting a course today also. So that's very cool. So talking, like you said, talking to people in your, <clears throat> how do you say uh, zero of what we call, uh, zero you degrees, it? yeah. Zero yeah. degrees, you call it. So that's very yeah, so cool. And <laughs> that's, that's, that's my vision also. I wanted to ask you something. What yes. do you think about, um, you know, everybody's talking about, meaning that's the next thing. And, th and that is, it's more like my thing. Um, even though now I'm looking into more multifamily, but I'm already what we call smelling the coming you know, attractions, as we call it. I'm looking yeah, at the previews yeah. of the next, uh, of 2021. And what I'm looking at is, um, I mean, obviously retail, but I'm looking at hospitality. And that's what I want to talk about. Sure. Hospitality. Yeah. And why am I talking about hospitality now? Because everybody's talking about what are we going to do with these, either white elephants or those buildings that are, you know, are standing out there or going to stand out there and going to be foreclosed and, trouble is going to come and hit the fan and things are already happening. Sure. What do you think about this talk about con conversions, you know, conversions? because, yeah. because I have a lot yeah. of opinions about it, but I really love to hear what you think about it. You know, I, I, I can only give you a 30,000 foot view because I, I, I've been so focused, you know, I yeah, yeah, no, but focus it, that's good enough. I mean, it's, it's uh, two guys yeah, talking. You know, the, yeah, yeah. Look, the 30,000 foot view for me is, um, Leisure will come back. People will travel again. Um, human beings' memory is always short, right? Yeah, I believe uh, that too. 24 months from now, you know, Parker Meridian, New York City, one of my favorite hotels, right? Right. After 9-11, you could get a room at the Parker Meridian for, you know, 60 bucks a night. I called Parker Meridian recently because I was actually going to go to the city and, and, and meet some, some clients. And I call Parker Meridian. They're closed. They closed. They closed the hotel. Um, now is Parker Crazy. Meridian going to go out of business? Are they going to convert that to high-end condominiums? I think the answer to that is no. But what I will tell you is this: we still have that housing shortage. And if somebody has the financial depth, and it's not me, it's not my business structure. But if somebody has that financial depth to look at some of those assets and play a long game a 36 month, even a 48 month fruition on those assets. I think there's a lot of money to be made there. So th um, that's exactly what I think. And I think that, and I know who is that, and you probably know who to know too. And these are the families, the family offices, mostly the, you know, sure. the private families that have deep pockets that are in the sure. game for a long time. They're not those type of guys who are doing, you know, what I do, what you, what you do, what I, you know, syndicating right, money right, or right, fundraising, right, raising right. capital. Those guys have, have private money. Uh, they, they uh, how to say, they have resources that you can't even imagine. And sure, they're just sure. waiting on the fence to just like a Pac-Man go and eat and eat. 
Yeah, and that's what they were waiting yeah. for. Exactly, yeah. I believe that too. Yeah, I agree. I'd be I'd be interested to see when that starts to to move. I don't think it's now. No, I still right. think it's in. I still right. think it's maybe 12, 12 months out, and then so you got a five year exit strategy on that plan if you started preparing for it today and, and doing your due diligence on it. Um, you know, a lot of these, even if you take it down to a smaller scale, a lot of these strip malls in New York, you call them taxpayers, you know, a couple of stores downstairs, 24, 48 units upstairs, that kind of stuff. You know, even, even those um, have, the, have the ability, I think, to, to convert, taking some of that retail, that smaller retail from downstairs, converting it to, to residential if zoning allows. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's a big question. Uh, That's a big question. The big question is New yeah, York City. Yeah, because then it's parking. It's parking. It's, you know, look, uh, uh, movement of people, et cetera, et cetera. So. Look, uh, from, from, what, from where the city is going today, you know, um, with more affordable housing that they want to move, you know, with their current mayor, as we call it, that's yeah, uh, yeah. Um, it's a possibility. But, you know, who, I think that the big cities are, are the place that, you know, right now they're put on hold, meaning we don't know yep. what will happen. We yep. do know that yep. they'll come back. New York City will be back. Of will, course will it, it will. Be, of course. Will it be three years? Will it be seven years? Will it be five years? We, we don't know. There are all kind of voices all over the place, and that's why the game is so dangerous. But, um, you know, a lot of people, yep. uh, you know, from the larger funds are talking already about, you know, especially meaning, meaning um, in different countries, you know, different countries sure. like in Israel, sure. like in Europe sure. and all kind of places. Sure. They're saying, sure. yeah, let's sure. buy New York City. Wait, wait, you wait. know, wait. hold on. Just... Wait, <laughs> it's the same thing with the, with, the large, with the large malls and things of that nature. I know an investor tried to take down a mall for, for uh, seven, it was 700 million. It was a conglomerate of malls. And uh, one of my private investors said, why should, I, why should I do your fund when I could do that? And look, I'm buying those things at 75 cents on the dollar, whatever he quoted me. And I said to him, look, man, there's no right or wrong. It's just educated decisions that we make in our world. Right. You know, everybody with this strategy. You don't find out whether, right, you don't find out right or wrong until four, five, six, seven, eight years from now. I said, but here's my, my take on it. I'm going to be able to buy that retail space at 35 or 40 cents on the dollar a year or two, two years from now. You know? be. So it's, it's, you, it's. You know which question I would ask? That kind of an investor yeah. would come to me. The one question I would ask, and it comes down to, always comes down to that question. I mean, obviously everybody could be wrong. Everybody could make a mistake. That's sure. 100%. Sure. We're not sure. gods and stuff. But it comes down to one question. The question is, if a person would tell me, um, I want to invest, you know, in that mall, 75 you know, cents of the dollar, whatever you call it. Yeah. And, yeah. This is, and this is a great opportunity and all that stuff. The first the, the question I would ask is, with who are you investing? Who? The who? That's right. And who That's is that it. person? Yes. If, it's, if it's a new fund, like, um, you know, like an opportunity fund that came up and says, yeah, we want to find opportunities, yeah. I would stay away. It's like fire. Run away. Run. But if it's Run. a guy who does retail for the past 20 years, and yeah. that is his current strategy, that would yeah. be... Pretty interesting, that's, you know. That's worth. I'm not saying it's the sure. thing to do, but that's already something to think about. Yeah. You know, the guy yeah. knows what he's yeah. doing. He's been through some certain downturns. He knows what he. You know, that that's a different game already. So for that's, sure. For sure. So the who is a big thing. Yeah, the money. The money goes to work with the managers. You know, the the the, the physical real estate and the execution and the business plan. I mean, that's that's ticking boxes. It's it's exactly. the, uh, the the track record. The track record, 100%. dude. It's like I got. It's like I got a new brother sitting in Israel. <laughs> <laughs> I love it's cool. it. I love it's cool. It's very cool. Listen, I'm having a lot of fun here. We could go. I think we could go until tomorrow. But you know, we have work to do. Yeah, but... yeah, we do. No more playtime. It's time exactly. to go to work. Exactly. Exactly. What can I? What can I do for you, man? So, so first of all, so I'll tell you what. First of all, it's a pleasure. I'm going to put. Obviously, we're recording this. I'm going to put it. First of all. On, uh, on my thing, on my podcast. It's called the yeah. Shai Breslauer CRE Shark Eye Podcast. Shark Eye because we need shark eyes to see and look and learn a deal. That's what we have to be. Yeah, we can't be less than that. Uh, and, uh, and that's very important. So that's my podcast. It's a new podcast. So, but I'm going to put it there. I mean, I'm going to put it there. I have on LinkedIn, I have, you know, you can look at my, my profile. Very I cool. 
a fair, yeah. a fair good amount of, of followers over there. And, uh, and this will be on so they can get to know you, first of all. And I'd love to give you value. And whoever wants to, you know, get to know Dave uh, and their investment, what their activity, you heard about this. And it seems like, not only seems like, but it sounds like that they know what they're doing uh, time and time again. And that's so important. And uh, as per me, right now, meaning I'm on the fence, I'm looking at all kind of cool stuff. We'll see what happens. But I'd love to discuss with you in private uh, further. We'll yeah. see what happens right yeah. now. But um, right now, I, I can tell everybody what I have now. I have a new course, you know, for guys who are, uh, if, if you could share also with your guys, I have a new course for commercial real estate beginners, for people who want to okay. get into the business and they want to get their feet wet and want to learn the business, something that me and Dave had to break our teeth to do. You can do it much easier in 60 days. That's, that's what I created. And that's pretty cool. And that can be, ex, you know, accessed, uh, meaning I'll share with you the link. You could, uh, you could put it down there. Yes. And you'll give me your link and I'll share it, uh, you know, with awesome. me. And that'll be great. And we should keep in touch. We could see what we could do today. We will. We will we, keep that's in touch. That's 100%. We absolutely will keep in touch. I'd, I'd yes. love to hear about, about the things that you do right now, meaning specifically we can't obviously, according to, you know, we know the rules. We can't share specifics, you know, in the, you know, right. in, in the right. air, but uh, on the air. But uh, I'd love to hear. Really love to hear. Okay. I appreciate your time, my man. Really, okay. really did appreciate pleasure. this call. One of the pleasure. Best, Thank you so much. One of the best conversations I've had in a while. Take care of yourself. Take care, man. No Go problem. Bless. My pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.